Welcome to the Salon Aral. I'm Adara. I'm Kara. And today we'll be discussing Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. So what are your overall thoughts and feelings about the book? There's many thoughts and feelings. Where should I begin? <laughs> yes, Kara, where should you begin? <laughs> Just like so much happened in the book, you know? Yeah. The kind of thing where like, I wasn't expecting it because like the first 50 pages, I was like, not much is happening. And stuff started happening. I was like, damn, <laughs> that's where we are now. Yeah. And I don't know. The ending took me by surprise. Just the way that things kind of turned out and didn't resolve themselves at all. Yeah, that's how I felt. <laughs> I think for me, it was like with the ending, it was all of these characters are thinking different things about relatively the same thing. And then hearing their different perspectives, it was just kind of like, oh my God, this is how Cordelia feels. And then Lucy cares, but then she's focused on Jesse. And then Matthew is going. Like his weird bracelet thing that's like mind controlling him or something like that. What? Like, yeah. Who's like, yeah, he's, he's in love. And, but like. <laughs> uh-huh. Oh and then Alistair. Oh my God. That boy. <laughs> that boy. He's like. Tragic. He's, like he has a lot of depth, I think, for a character, but it's like, you can't really tell at the same time. He hides it. He just yeah. he doesn't, I don't know. And then also, can I just say, I feel like it's a very Cassandra Clare kind of thing to, like, make people both be in love with each other, but, like, not know it and assume that, like, the other is not in love. Like, the same exact thing happened in The Dark Artifices with um, Emma and, what's his face? Julian? Yes. <laughs> That's his name. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, do you remember? Like, that stuff happened kind of then, too. Yeah, I, or I think it's especially relevant with the um, Infernal Devices with Will and Tessa and Will with yeah. Curse. Yeah. Yeah. She kind of just has her tropes that she holds on to and uses again and again. And, and we I fall for it. Every single time. And we fall for it each yeah. time. <laughs> I swear. Oh, my God. Okay, so we know our thoughts and feelings. Who is your favorite character? Um, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> out of the main characters or all the characters? Out of any of the characters. Well, as soon as the cat was in there, it can't be Hey, him. you can't go with a fucking cat. <laughs> <laughs> he was briefly mentioned, <laughs> but the cat did nothing. Um, honestly, I really liked Anna Lightwood, but that... Yeah. Because I'm gay and I was like, damn, she's cool. <laughs> so, Anna is awesome. Like, she's, so bad. she's what I want to be, kind of. I mean, she's, yeah. I'm like, damn. She's, excuse me in a second. <laughs> she is amazing. Oh um, my God, yes. I'd say my favorite character, I mean, the first time I read it, it's my obvious go to James. <laughs> Of course, of like course. you could have called that before even reading the book. You're just being like, "Yeah, her favorite character is gonna be James." <laughs> I'm not surprised a single bit there. <laughs> yeah, but that was the first time I read it. Second time, it's Matthew. That's, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. What does that yeah. say? About you? <laughs> I, I thought I've changed a lot since March 2020 now. and March 2021. <laughs> Did you read it initially when it first came out? So I got the book. I, okay. I was like, think about like COVID timeline. Like that's kind of wild. So it came out March 3rd, 2020. Mm-hmm. And that was during my spring break. <laughs> before the world Your shut down. Break. Yeah. <laughs> and I woke up early that day on my spring break. And I bought the book online to pick up in store and I, I ordered this before the store even opened. <laughs> and then I had Meg go pick it up for me. And I was, I was technically the first person to buy it in the Barnes & Noble here. So, yeah, I'm that kind of fan. <laughs> and then I was in a reading funk because I had just binged read a billion books because my laptop was broken. And so it was like all I could do was sit and read. Because I couldn't, mm-hmm. you know, watch Netflix like I usually did on the weekends. Yeah. <laughs> so I was burnt out with reading. And so I read the book very slowly for my usual 
length of time to read a book, which is usually a day um, with some books. Um, and so it took me like three or four weeks. And it was also, I basically started it when lockdown started. And so I was in a mood <laughs> while reading. Let's put it lightly. Yeah, I think part of why it took me so long to read it was that there was basically this pandemic going on in the book. And then it was like, there, there, there's a pandemic going on in my life too. Yeah. I don't like, want to relate to quarantine. And I was like, damn. It was like reading it then in March of 2020. It was just kind of like, I don't know if I can mentally handle reading a book that's also dealing with quarantine and lockdowns and pandemics. It was just kind of like, I don't want to relate to a book on this level. Yeah. Yeah. And then I think because of that, I wasn't wanting to read all the time. And then, but I also felt like when I was reading, it was always the parts where Cordelia was talking about her father. And then I just got annoyed with her because it's just kind of like, but you should just want to make friends in general, not just want to make friends to save your father. Mm -hmm. And then, but my opinion of Cordelia has changed. I don't find her annoying as much anymore. <laughs> I think there was one scene that still bothers me. And it's right before she finds out the truth about him. And she's talking to James. And it was like that about to talk about their feelings or deal. And then she's just like, I just need to find someone to save my father sort of thing. It was just like, you're talking to the boy you love. And you're just like, let me talk about and my you dad. Have for like your whole life. Yeah. And it was just like, it, that just annoyed me. So it's just like, yeah. really? Come on. I did notice that it like really stopped after Alistair like brought up yeah. the truth of the situation. She was like, whoa. Yeah. I'll be supporting this dude. Yeah. And I was like, wow. Like she's actually like properly looking around her now and like seeing what she actually has rather than mm -hmm. wants to have, I guess. So yeah, I think it's like that loss of innocence theme that you see in books where it's just like she finds out the truth about her father being an alcoholic and it's just kind of like, oh, that explains my childhood and now I view my father differently. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it really changed a lot in like how she viewed both her father and then also I guess like the world and her family because mm -hmm. I, I, I assume that she'd be like, why would my family hide this from me for so long? Like, why did they allow me to worship someone who's just a drunk like yeah she held him in such high regard like she I don't know I don't know it's really interesting I think it's also the role of Alistair in that whole situation where he was just like I wanted you to respect our father the way I never could which I, it's roughly how it is said I don't have that written down but yeah 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 and have like just a love for him and still like a good outlook on life because Alistair was he got pretty bitter about it and stuff. And I guess he didn't want his sister to fall into the same trap. Mm -hmm. Which is, that's always fun. <laughs> I think it's also like an older, like when you're the oldest sibling, it's a mentality of it's just like when you are in a bad situation, especially with like parents, it's like you will not view your parents as you should have, but you try to make sure that your younger siblings can view their parents that way you know mm -hmm. so it's like you're shielding them and protecting them but and it's what Alistair yeah. did really um, he was just trying his best he was yep trying his best trying to be a good boy did some naughty things in, at the academy but that's different <laughs> yeah the whole thing is just um, wild Alistair has like later I want to okay wait okay before we go on I want to talk about this stuff that you like misinterpreted on your first read through. Oh, you want to talk about that? I, I'm very curious. I want to talk about that. So, okay, like, what, what what did you do? I I guess we have to go in chronological order of what happened in the book. Um, I remembered the the scene where Cordelia eavesdrops on Charles and Alistair. I remember that scene entirely differently. Very differently. How so? What kind of different? <laughs> I'm concerned. Should I be concerned? be concerned? I'm very concerned. I thought, uh, here's how I remembered it, that she was upstairs and she needed to get water. And so she went downstairs and then saw 
Charles and Alistair in a uh, compromising position. Child. There was no talking involved. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> and then there's more. And then I thought that she had literally walked into the room seeing that. And then Alistair got mad at her for walking in. That's how I remembered that scene. I misremember it so terribly. <laughs> Don't worry, you think that's bad. There are other things that are worse. <laughs> Don't be shy, keep going. <laughs> um, and then I remembered the ending very differently. Um, I thought Barbara came back to life. <laughs> um <laughs> that's a thought <laughs> I thought that the antidote just even for the dead people brought them back to life but, oh, but it oh, gets oh, worse how can it get worse than that I thought they only gave the antidote to Barbara out of the dead people, and so Oliver, her promised fiance, whatever their thing was, just still dead. <laughs> oh my god, no! <laughs> That'd be so bad! Um, so those are two <laughs> your plot points I, that I, I remember way differently. What? <laughs> Um, but there, there's more. <laughs> I have no words. Um, <laughs> special child. I know. Special, special. <laughs> um, but the other part that um, I spoiled for myself with my second read through, because I looked uh-huh. up the plot because I was like, I need, I should create some questions, but I couldn't read the book, and I was just like, I'll just look up the plot. I've read the book before. It's not going to be that different. Uh-huh. <laughs> was I think it just went over my head that Matthew basically has feelings for Cordelia and yeah that was pretty easy to miss it was pretty easy to miss and I think there was so much going on in my life when I first read it where I was just kind of like I probably forgot that didn't yeah. really process things <laughs> um so when I was reading the plot thing, and it was on Wikipedia, <laughs> and oh, yes, it was just lover. like, wait, Matthew has feelings for Cordelia? What? And it was just like, I'm spoiling the book for myself. It was like, <laughs> like, you've seen those posts where it's just like, which book would you want to reread for the first, like, read for the first time again? Mm-hmm. I realized that that's basically what I did with my second read through of Chain of Gold. <laughs> Okay, can I just say, from the beginning, I expected Matthew to be Cordelia's love interest. Like, especially with the dance, when, like, James ran away to, like, be with Grace. Yeah. And, like, left her in the middle of the dance where Matthew was like, I got you, and, like, just came in, and I was like, oh, but sweet really, boy. I, okay, so I found it really cute, actually, that during the first ball scene and he runs away to grace and leaves cordelia on the dance floor Uh, totally like that's exactly what you should do in that situation and matthew comes to her rescue but then at the end when james is on the balcony and grace is there cordelia is dancing with matthew you're right i am right because i finished it technically this morning at 1 a.m but (laughs) yeah. <laughs> Listen, I still finished it on time, and that's better than what I did in some chapters with the Harry Potter reading group. Good times, good times. Good times. Oh, God, but yeah, that's a good point. Parallels. Parallels. All that good stuff. But I, I love Matthew. Um, Matthew, James. He just needs to get his shit together and stop drinking. Yeah. That's all. So, so James was my original favorite character. Mm-hmm. Now I think he's like number five. Really? Yeah. Who he comes fell down him? on that hierarchy? Yeah, that's a um, long fall. So Matthew, number one, my favorite character currently. 
And then I can't really decide if it's Thomas or Lucy, who's going to be my second favorite, but those are two and three. And then with four, it's like at some scenes it was Alistair actually. And then other scenes it was Cordelia. And then it's <laughs> also it was just really surprising. I expected him to be like a massive douchebag, but like who James? No, Alistair. Alistair, yeah. I was expecting the worst from him. And like, yeah, he was a dick in the academy. I'm not gonna look over that. Like no. when, when they were like sharing like what all he said and stuff, I was like, you ain't never coming back from that, but I, it was pretty obvious that he's changed and stuff, um, and that surprised me because I, again, I was expecting the worst. He is like an onion. He has so many layers. Mm-hmm. It's like you think you know it. You don't know. Like it's like an onion. You buy an onion at the grocery store. You don't know if this is the onion that's gonna make you cry like hell in the kitchen. Um, but it's like it has these many layers, and some layers just fall apart because it's an onion, but others layers stay together, some make you cry. So mm-hmm. I think that's like Alistair. He's he's an onion. Mm-hmm. He especially made the four boys cry a lot. He was that kind of onion. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was a mean <laughs> onion. Um, what are your thoughts of Thomas and Alistair and Paris? That, I was not expecting it. I was like, when it was like, oh, days passed, and it like brought me to Thomas. I was like, we've never talked from Thomas's perspective. Like, why are we doing this now? So that really surprised me. And I, I feel like it was interesting. Um, I, I don't know. I feel like it was kind of almost could have been done without, like, I feel like their relationship wasn't that developed in Chain of Gold enough to warrant, like, that whole flashback scene. Like, I feel like that could have been, like, a second book kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Could have started, like, hinting at it in this book and then, like, actually really discussed it. <clears throat> like, I feel like it was almost a bit heavy-handed, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think it's, like, if that scene was taken out, it really wouldn't have affected the book itself. Mm-hmm. But... You also, when you do read from Thomas's perspective, which isn't that often, but it doesn't happen, is he does think about Alistair. And you can tell that his thoughts on Alistair have changed, but he hasn't voiced those thoughts either. Um, I think it's going to come into play in this next book. Which oh, happens. absolutely. Yeah, that's so hard. I don't <laughs> know. I'm <laughs> so I think it's going to come into play later. I, But I can't tell if it's like romantic feelings or just you're my friend now you were my bully but I guess we're friends I thought it was romantic I thought it was romantic too but then there are parts of the story I'm leaning towards more on the romantic side but I guess it's Mm -hmm. like I don't know because Thomas never really goes into detail of how he feels he's just like but I feel differently about him yeah and we obviously don't hear about Alistair's perspective at all. So we don't know. It's very interesting. I feel like it'll be interesting to see how, like, where it goes in the second book. I'm yeah. hoping it really develops. Yeah. Can I just say, okay, another thing? There were some bits where it almost felt like Matthew was like not in love with Cordelia but could have been like in love with James mm. that, get, like especially I, 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 I opened up my book because that's what I do and he was like looking um, on page 575 if you want to read along he was still looking at the dance for they're not just the crowd of dancers themselves but rather a specific couple Cordelia Carstills and James Carstills. That's not the name. That is the wrong Car- name. <laughs> That's the <laughs> Um, <clears throat> But, like, I feel like that scene could have been interpreted of him being jealous of Cordelia, not jealous of James being in love with, or being with Cordelia, because, like, that's kind of, and then especially with, like, Magnus coming in and being, like, uh, in this is like there have been a hundred Matthew Fairchilds, young men and women as self-destructive, blah, blah, you know, like all that stuff. And he, uh, Magnus is 
he helps out the girls and the gays. That's just how he is. So I was like, oh, <laughs> maybe that could be an interpretation of this, but I don't know. I think he, I think Matthew loves Cordelia. I could see how it could be James. And yeah, like it's probably not James. It's entirely like a big brotherly vibe going on. So yeah. it's probably not that. <laughs> And I mean, they also can't because remember in Dark yes. Artifices, yeah. yeah. Like we already went up, like the Parapetai falling in love and how badly that goes. So I don't think that we're going to go through that again. No, I can't go through another Libby death. <laughs> that but, book, those books are so much. <laughs> I think that he's in love with Cordelia because he says to Magnus, it would be one thing if James loved her. I'd go into the quiet dark like Jem did and never speak of her again, but he doesn't love her. Mm-hmm. So I think it's like that thing where it's like when you look at these <clears throat> devices and just Jem finding out that Will is in love with Tessa and Jem also knows he's going to die or slash become a silent brother yeah. and he can't be with Tessa and just so it's yeah. like I'm just gonna go in the dark and leave it alone and it's fine I'll get over it but I think he I think he loves Cordelia at what point do you think he started falling for her? I don't know. Also, it, it, I don't know. Wasn't he, I can't remember this exactly because it was a long book and I basically binge read it, but wasn't there one point where he said to Lucy maybe that he was worried about Cordelia and James because he was worried about James hurting Cordelia? Like, didn't he yeah. say that? At- yeah, he did. I think I marked <laughs> it. I forget. I'll find it, but. I love that. So I feel like that was like definitely around the time where he had feelings, but hadn't addressed them to himself because he was like nah nah that's my girl I can't go after her (laughs) yeah um I think you could technically say the beginning of his feelings for her was in the hell Mm -hmm. um wait which time yeah right before the scene in the whispering room where James and Cordelia so when Cordelia did the dance and stuff did the dance because when I read on the plot things online (laughs) Mm-hmm. spoiled everything for myself um it was like it mentioned that her dance and song whatever entranced everyone but especially James and Matthew and I'm like wait maybe that's the part <laughs> where Matthew yeah, like, let, let's talk about that <laughs> yeah, and then also his reaction when he discovers them in the whispering room um it wasn't like a bad reaction I haven't marked let me find it <laughs> I love that I can't remember if I marked it or not. I tell me what page it is if you find it. I need to find it. Oh, wherever the fuck is it? Well, you're looking. Can we just talk about how beautiful the cover is? Like, it's just so. I cool. love. I just, I love it. Like, oh my god, how they make it so beautiful. And then, like, the cover for the next book too is amazing. Okay. Yeah. Like, that one about Cassie Claire, but her covers are beautiful. on point. Okay, so the page is 379. Okay, okay. Um, and it's in the chapter, The Whispering Room. Um, Makes sense. Okay, so it says, the door to the room opened again. James froze and a moment later scrambled up and off the desk, seizing his coat. He handed it to Cordelia as she sat up hurriedly. So they had just made out. Matthew stood on the threshold, staring at them both. Cordelia clutched the coat to her, though she was still fully dressed. Still, it felt like something of a shield against Matthew's stunned gaze. Um, James, he said, and he sounded as if he didn't quite believe the evidence of his own eyes. His expression was tense and sharp as his eyes flicked from James to Cordelia's shoes discarded on the floor. Um, And then Cordelia says, we're not meant to be in here. James thought if we pretended, I mean, if someone came in thought and he's like and Matthew says I understand and he doesn't look at her but he looks at James but yeah so I think that's like a moment where it's just like maybe that's when Matthew's like fuck I have feelings for Cordelia when he discovers his best friend making out with her Mm -hmm. whatever happened with like the Matthew Lucy kind of thing like I feel like that was also a subplot and I was like what that was resolved actually mm. from Cordelia's perspective um oh, during was that? I missed that <laughs> in the it was right before she uh, made the announcement that she had spent the night with James all alone <laughs> and basically ruined herself um, but it was in that 
enclave meeting that they were they had to attend a lot of shit happened um and she said whatever really happened between lucy and matthew it's just it's resolved itself they're not at each other's they weren't at each other's throats but there was like some tension i guess not bad tension but tension Mm -hmm. um so it's been resolved i don't know how it was resolved i think it was just more of each discovered they truly have feelings for matthew with cordelia and lucy with jesse wait did you just come to the room no i just i i don't i wasn't sure where that was going to be going either because like now he's dead dead but like I don't know. I don't know. Dude, this book, my little tiny brain is uh, struggling up here. (laughs) Well, so I have the hardcover edition of Clockwork Princess, and on the cover has the family trees. What? You didn't know that? Well, I knew that because you told me that spoiled it for you and stuff, and that's why you felt justified in spoiling it to me years ago. Oh geez, I'm gonna drop everything. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, we can keep talking while I'm looking this okay. up. Just, I need so, a Basically, on the family tree, it says Lucy marries Jesse Blackthorn. Shit. What? Yeah, yeah. Hey. Um, but listen, okay. But here are some other things that are I don't want to say discrepancies, but. Clockwork Princess was published like what 2013 2014 I don't think Cassandra Clare was planning out this book at during that year and there are some things that have changed like I think it shows that Barbara didn't die in 1903 and mm-hmm. all of that so I think there are things that have changed so she may not marry Jesse Blackthorne and maybe Cordelia won't marry James. She'll marry Matthew. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm gonna process. Uh, yeah, wait. <sighs> Oh, jeez, I just need my desk. (laughs) So then, but yeah, no, I, it looks like she had been planning to make Jesse a ghost, question mark, due to the age difference between him and Lucy, because, like, they're, like, 12 years apart. (laughs) So, like, I don't, well, I don't know where I'm going with this. (laughs) I don't know where I'm going with this. Um, interesting. Uh huh. We're gonna have to cut this out because I'm not making any. Oh wait, <laughs> wait. There is more. There's more. They, so she changed. Barbara was supposed to not not die in 1903, and Lucy was supposed to be much younger. Lucy is now closer to Cordelia and James's age. That's true, because like it looks like she, based on this. Yeah. She would have so, been around like younger yeah yeah so a lot of things were changed so that's why I'm saying where it's like I don't think I can reference my six plus year old book cover family tree yeah I wonder is there like an updated family tree on like the website is you, there, does you have a website there is a website I don't know if there's a family tree there might be but wait I'm going to stop you from looking it up because there might be spoilers with chain Ooh. of iron just in case someone else oh, dies. Girl, you make a good point there. That's why I decided not to look up the family tree online and just reference my six plus year old one. That makes sense. That makes sense. Can I also just say, I really wanted to look up the family tree, but I was also worried about like chain of iron spoilers because I could not keep who was siblings and who was cousins and how everyone was related to each other. Yeah. It, I could not keep this straight. I was like, wait, who's Barbara's siblings? Who's Christopher related? Who's Charles? What? Like, I don't know why, but there are just so many generic British people names that I could not, <laughs> I could not keep track of it all in my head. I was going mad trying to, like, put everything together. I swear to God. Yeah, I remember the first time I read it, I always got Christopher and Thomas confused because they were such side characters and yeah. they're both lightwoods. 
Um, yeah, I just, so, yeah. I just knew that Matthew was not related to them. Yeah, and then it's also said where it's like from especially Lucy's perspective, where it's like my cousins, even the ones she's not related to, technically. Yeah, like the other Lightwoods. So okay. it's, it's like having family friends where it's just like they're practically family. Mm-hmm. I guess is a good way of explaining. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, I should have asked you like who was related to who because honestly this whole book whenever people are like oh your brother did this I was like wait who was your brother again yeah like which one (laughs) I I just I don't know why I had so much trouble keeping track of it but I was like my brain was like no we're not retaining this information yeah but it It, it was definitely confusing for me when I first read it because it's just like wait who is related to who um Mm -hmm. but the second time was like I know these characters now Yes, yeah, 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 that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Hopefully, I'm going to Chain of Iron, knowing them a little bit better. <laughs> but we'll see. Um, but then if we also reference the family tree that I was talking about, um, Christopher marries Grace. <laughs> Various levels of shock that are going across your face right now. It's fantastic. You're I'm not, but, but it said... <laughs> grace cartwright which is her birth name but her name is now blackthorn so i'm just like maybe it will change but then i don't know if i should tell you this because it's technically a spoiler about chain of eye but like neither of us have read the later books so like it's yeah i i was going through cassandra claire's instagram story and there was fan art and i think it was grace and christopher and then i forget what the caption said but it's just like do they get together i mean the family tree says so um She's but aware. She's so I aware. don't know, but then I'm just like, but then James, and then Charles, and then so many different factors, and, and then it's just like Matthew too, right? What? Oh, and then Matthew, but Matthew I think is more peripheral yeah. in the sense where it's just like, yeah, he doesn't yeah, talk absolutely. about it. It's all good. Can we? Can we also just talk about like what is up with Grace? How is she? Like, what kind of mind control shit is she doing? What are your thoughts on Grace? I don't know. I, she scares me. <laughs> like, I, I assumed at one point that it had to have something to do with the bracelet, which, like, made people infatuated with her or something. But then she just made Matthew kiss her, and he wasn't wearing the bracelet. So I was like, huh? I don't know. I, Okay. I have some theories. Uh huh. I'm going to first start with my overall thoughts about her. She's manipulative and conniving. Like, she gets what she wants, like, at a freakishly weird level, where it's not even like, yeah, I will yeah. get my shadow hunter ruins by the end of the year. It's the, I will make you do what I want when I want it done. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, so my theory is, I mean, I think the bracelet, while it says in the days past section that it was her biological mother's, I don't think it is. I think it belonged to Belial, Belial, James's long lost grandfather. Oh. And so, because he's working with Tatiana Blackthorn. And Grace. Wait, that shit also gave me whiplash. I was like, I'd hold say, up. yeah, yeah. Um, but so I think that bracelet was never her mother's, or maybe it was, but now it has this dark magic aspect because Prince of Hell. Um, and she was instructed by her mother, who was instructed by Belial or Bel- Belial, evil grandfather. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To give this to James. And that's why that happened. So Belial got mad at Grace because she took the bracelet back from James. And yeah, yeah, yeah. he had to have that on. And so I think there's this dark magic aspect with the bracelet. But I also think there's some dark magic stuff going on with her. Because how the fuck did she make Matthew kiss her? Yes, I was, like, that threw me. I was like, oh, my God. Like, I don't know. I, it's just, (laughs) I don't know what to make of it. Because 
again, like like I said, I thought at some point that I had to do with the bracelet and like whoever was wearing it, she could like bend them to do her will or something. But then I don't know. I'm just confused. I think she's manipulative and conniving and gets what she wants. But it's also like I don't she's think of her. Largely. I just I don't know how to think of her because it's like there's the part of me that's like she has Tatiana Blackthorn as a mother like Mm -hmm. that's not fun and it's not a great relationship but there's also like but she's consciously making these decisions yeah but she's built a really horrible hand but she's still going through and like doing this stuff and manipulating people Mm -hmm. Uh, um do you think that James ever truly loved her? I think that he wanted to and he liked the idea of it. Mm-hmm. Nice to have like a nice summer romance you can come back to every year. I think that that's what he loved. I don't think that he ever really loved her. Um, I think it was that like, was my view. On- and there's this one scene where I really I forget from whose perspective it was. It was probably James, but it was it was like that pity love where it's like you he I'm loved only her friend. <laughs> but it was really that he pitied her yeah yeah so i think it could <sighs> that sort of thing but do you think grace loved james no not in the slightest no not at all <laughs> i think uh, she a means to an end for her yeah I think she does have feelings for him in some sense because she did feel guilty about giving him back the bracelet. Mm -hmm. Remember? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think she's in love with him. I think it's, she's being selfish and having to do what she feels she has to do and is being told to do. Not what's best for him, I guess. Um... So, which one of us is Lucy and which is Cordelia? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like we're both, we both just channel Lucy energy. <laughs> I think we do. <laughs> yeah, because there are scenes where I was just like, yeah, I'm Lucy. Like, she's short. <laughs> I remember writing. I was like, damn. <laughs> yeah. She really just me and wrote me (laughs) but then there's this other scene where cordelia was i i have it here i will find it um but it was like how lucy can never keep a secret and she talks loudly sort of deal like she doesn't whisper and it reminded me of something that grace our grace not grace in this book (laughs) said to me she was just like yeah whenever I try to tell you something and I'm like Adara guess what apparently I say loudly what (laughs) (laughs) nothing is secretive because I'm very loud about it and everyone knows what's funny is that like she said kind of similar things to me where like I get louder when I'm like more passionate about stuff yeah our grace has also pointed that out to me back in like high school and stuff so yeah Yeah. no that's that's (laughs) funny that you choose to play that out because same yeah like that's me I think neither of us are like we're neither it's not like Rose and he like hate where it's obvious who's who um I think the pretty like who the hell are those (laughs) who are those people um I think with Cordelia it's we're we're both of us are more of Lucy's we're not Cordelia um but which one of us is James and which is Matthew? I don't know. I, I'm, I don't know for that one. I'm not sure. I should have looked at these questions before. We came. <laughs> I just said, preparing. who is she? I don't know. She's not me. <laughs> um, I have no idea. <laughs> I, what? Who do you think? What's, what's your, what's your idea here? I don't know either, but I think also with those two characters is they are vastly different 
in a lot of ways, even though they are paravatai. Um, but it's like, we're different people, but it's like, we are very similar too. I think yeah, yeah. Matthew is, he's very much like, puts up this facade of how he wants people to see him. And, but in reality, there's so much more and he's not that person. Whereas James is just like, yep, this is who I am. But I think he's just, but he true, he shows his true self. Whereas Matthew's like, this is who I am. But this is what I want you to see. Yeah. Not the truth. Yeah. I don't know. But- I don't know. I feel like, again, we're both just Lucy's. That's what it is. Yeah, <laughs> Lucy's. That's just how it would be. <laughs> Which of the Merry Thieves would you be? I don't know. I don't know. I'm bad at this. Maybe Thomas. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and yeah. that's things. And he, like, okay, also... Another thing about Thomas is that he doesn't, like, expect the best of himself, like, especially when he was trying to, like, make the antidote, and it was, like, dude, like, you know how to do it. Like, I know Christopher is the one who, like, did all the studying, but, like, you were there with him and stuff, like, you're able to do it as well, and he, like, really doubted himself, and I'm like, whoa, same. Mm-hmm. Even though I'm garbage, so, you know. <laughs> but, yeah. That I don't know. Might- Probably Thomas, though. So. Yeah, that what she just said about, you know, where it's like not believing in the best of yourself or you, roughly what she said. I marked down a quote. Where is it? <laughs> okay, I found Good it. Luck. It's on page 525. Um, I'm trying to, to give you context of what was happening. Um, they... We're talking about the mask James was putting up, and this was after he got the bracelet back. And yeah. Matthew pointed out this mask, and he said to Cordelia, you must find me ridiculous, Matthew said. Parabatai ought to be close, and in truth, I will not want to live in this world without James. Yet he tells me nothing of what he feels. I do not find you ridiculous, and I wish you would not say such things, Cordelia said. Matthew, you may speak however badly of yourself as you like, but it does not make it true. You decide the truth about yourself, no one else, and the choice about what kind of person you will be is yours alone. So that just reminded me of that quote that I pulled from the book. Yeah, yeah. So basically, all of the Mary Thieves are just uh, have low self esteem. <laughs> <laughs> doubt themselves except maybe Christopher Christopher knows what he's doing he's pretty confident yeah I think what I've seen just it. like I know what I know and I'm good with that yes yeah like he's he yeah he's a abilities and he's not gonna like down sell himself which is like nice you go I believe in you who do you feel you are um I'd say it's like between Thomas and Matthew because mm-hmm. I guess it's like where it's like Thomas where it's just like he cares about his friends deeply and is very selfless in that sense but I also feel like I'm Matthew (laughs) Um, I guess it's just like (laughs) but I guess it's like I don't know how to word it I'm bad at wording things um I feel that there is a really good idea of us a book podcast when we're bad at yeah, the talk um there's the scene is in the days past and matthew it's like a page and a half no yeah a page and a half okay go to page 430 okay it's in days past and matthew fairchild is just like i committed murder and he vows to never tell anyone that he did did, what, did anything ever come of that? I found some did stuff in my... So I found some stuff when I looked up the plot. Uh, <laughs> Is it spoilers for the next book? Don't no. spoil it. I'm not a spoiler. Um, it was that he killed um, inadvertently um, his younger sibling because Charlotte miscarried. 
<laughs> it's mentioned when Magnus Bane, I think, comes, and he's just like, oh, yeah, your mom was sick a couple years ago and lost a child. And Matthew's just like, yep, and moved on. So I think it's in reference to that. Matthew! This poor baby! Yeah, so... No. Oh my god, that's so sad! So that's why I think Matthew is a drunk. Um, is that he's drowning his guilt, but I also feel that he he says he's not going to tell anyone that he did this. And I feel like that's something I would do, where it's just like, I did something so bad, vow to never mention it again. I think that's something I would do. <laughs> and just yeah. have to take a month's guilt for it. Wow. What? Huh. What was up with like his hands being covered in ash? Like what was that referencing? I don't know. Again, I only really found out that he possibly murdered his sibling. Um, in his eyes, he murdered it. Um, by the really plot line. This also is something I came to the conclusion of while reading. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Huh. Whoa. Poor Matthew. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, this poor boy. He doesn't deserve that. I love Matthew. Wow. But yeah. You just love all the troubled ones. That's <laughs> what you are. Just a sucker for the troubled boys. <laughs> you loved Herndell, even when he was horrible. You loved James Malcolm, even when he was horrible. No, not like, the last time he was horrible. Not the last, but when he was still actively a criminal, you were like, that's one for me. And I was like, girl, no. <laughs> Honey. Wait. So, like, have a type. Give Boys me- who need fix. <laughs> get, you have to give me credit for when I gave up on him in Come Right That is true. I... I am not that a guy who character development. <laughs> Thanks. See, so I I am willing to acknowledge when it just isn't going to work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, always good. You can't always say the troubled ones. I mean, Jamie Fraser from Outlander. Well, I don't know enough about him. I only read the first two books, so okay. I, I don't know. But I wouldn't say he's a troubled character in that sense, like some of the others. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Um, but you could, say, you could say, historically speaking, that is the character I fall for. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily with this one, Matthew isn't a dick. He's just had shit going on in his life. So Exactly. Matthew is not a criminal. Not that going. Matthew's not a criminal. <laughs> He thinks he's a murderer, but I think he's just feeling guilty. I think he's innocent. Think yes, he's- yeah, no, he's probably not. We're gonna, we're gonna tell ourselves that. Yeah. So, yeah. choose your shadow hunter family: Harrendale, Carstairs, Lightwood, Fairchild, or Blackthorn. Which family would you? Carstairs, be? because I want to wield Cortana. <laughs> I want the sword. The sword is so cool. So that's my choice. <laughs> I'm like, I can't decide because I want to go with Herondale, but it's like... So you can marry into the family. I'd marry into the family, but I wouldn't want to be born into it because I'm in love with Will Herondale. Yeah. So if you were like, born into it, you couldn't be married into the family, so... Yeah. Um, born a car. That's what I want. I would not go with Blackthorn. Just, oh, that's just no. bad juju. So much stuff going on. Oh my god, their family just has issues. Wait, oh my god, there was this one thing that I marked. Um, the, no, yeah, dude, when, um, what, what's his face? Bad warlock, dude. Do you remember him? A man who uh, passed? Yeah, no, other bad warlock, dude, who was like barely mentioned. Ragnar Fell? That, no, other bad Alpha warlock, dude. Was, that one, he was like, did you say something like, oh, I can help you out as long as you're not Blackthorns or something? I was like, is that referencing the Dark Arthas? Like, is that what this is? Oh. Yes, 
Oh, he said there's no black blood in your family, is there? And Cordelia was like, no, nah, I don't think so. Yeah, that's so like, scary. like, is that is that referencing like the dark artifices and that whole plot line that happened? No, because it can't because that's set in the future. Um, like, when did when did his whole thing happen though? With his what what even was that? Like, he was trying to do necromancy because the girl he loved died. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Right? Yes. When Anna- did she die? 18 something. Yeah, when did Animal die? Was it exactly? So is this referencing that? I don't know, but here's my other theory. Tatiana Blackthorn is trying to get a bunch of warlocks to help her bring Jesse back from the dead. And so he could have just been like, I'm not doing that for you. And so that's why he's like, I don't want to do it. But I don't I think I like to think I like to think that it's referencing Annabelle because that's just really interesting and a really clever way. Tie it into her other books. I I think that'd be. It could be both. It could be both. He's just like you know what we're not gonna deal with those Blackthorns bad vibes. <laughs> but in reality, he is the source of the bad vibes. So. Oh yes. So since we're talking about Blackthorns, is Grace Blackthorn a morally gray character? She's a selfish character. That's just what it is. I don't think that she can be called morally gray because like she's not doing bad things for the purpose of the good. She's just doing stuff to benefit herself. Okay, yeah. Uh, So I don't think that she's necessarily gray. She's just, she's a darker shade of gray. (laughs) 50 shades of darker shades of gray. No! (laughs) No, I I don't know. Okay. No, I feel like kind of morally gray, but like she was just plain selfish. That's what I saw. But maybe I'm bad at analyzing characters, so there's that. I don't think she's morally bad, but she's not morally good. Mm-hmm. I think if it's like that comparison, then it's like, well, then she's morally gray, but I don't think she's morally gray for any other. Yeah, exactly. She just, there's not a lot to consider really morally with her because she's just acting for herself. Like she would do anything to get what she wants and what she, she'd do anything to like get her goal and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's something that a gray character would do, but it's, I don't know. I don't know. She's not the bad guy. Well, she's not the big bad of this book. <laughs> I'll say that. I don't know where it's going to go in the future, though. So, you know, we'll see. Mm-hmm. Well, so then is Tatiana the villain or Belial or Belial? Or... Oh, well, she's up there. Well, then who's, who's the villain? Is it Evil Grandfather or Tatiana? If you had to choose between them. Wait. Do I have to choose, though? They, were, they both kind of sucked. I mean, they're both villains in many senses, but I guess it depends. I feel like the big bad of this book was, like, Belial. Belial? How do we say his name? Evil Grandfather is how it's pronounced. (laughs) Yeah. Like, I feel like he was, like, the main bad guy and, like, the Mandicore and how that all tied together. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't think that Tatiana was, like, the main bad guy, but was, like... She certainly I, wasn't the protagonist. She was, I don't like her. She sucked. But I don't think that her villain story was this one. I feel like her villain story is going to come in a bit later. Oh, yeah. I think it's the next Maybe. book. Yeah, definitely. It ain't this one yet. <laughs> but we'll see. So how... Is, what do you think? I think... I think she's the villain in the sense of if you look at the personal lives of them. So what are your final thoughts on the book? I really liked it. I think it was really good. It took me a second to kind of get into it, but like once I did, it was really moving. So yeah, I, I think I gave it a five out of five stars because I'm very easy to please with my books and I'm not picky at all. But yeah. So Adara, what are your final thoughts? I fucking loved the book, and I can't wait to read Chain of Iron. 
And I'm excited to see what happens to the characters, especially um, James and Grace. And that whole mm-hmm. thing that's going on. I rated it on Goodreads five out of five, but of I rate most things I read five out of five. So yeah. nothing new. I don't want to give a bad score. But yeah. Join us next time as we read Chain of Iron, the sequel to this book by Cassandra Clare.